Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. We'll get started with the official webinar in two minutes. We're just waiting for um, everyone who registered to get on. Thank you. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining the Pyra uh, March member orientation. Let's see if I can get that out correctly. Um, delighted to have so many of you join. Uh, right now we have right around uh, 15 people on the webinar. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. We are recording the webinar, so it will be available early next week if you'd like to go back and uh, just check to see uh, you know, what information was uh, relayed today. Uh, also, uh, me or someone on my team will send you the slides. So don't be worried about taking notes on everything that's on the slides. Um, we will forward you these slides and along with a lot of links that might help you uh, navigate or uh, answer some of the questions that you have. Um, we are going to be interacting mostly via the Q&A box. I use the chat a lot. So I want to encourage you it, start networking now with each other um, and with us. We're going to also be sharing our LinkedIn with you as we go forward. So um, uh, uh, because of the amount of information that I share and the amount of people who participate, I we don't have you unmute yourself uh, on, in this platform. Uh, but again, feel free to connect with people here, connect with me via email. You're going to get my email if you don't already have it, because uh, I'd be delighted to spend some time with you offline, off the webinar to answer any more specific questions. I'm going to do my best to answer your questions today. Um, and uh, let's keep moving forward so that we can go through the agenda so that you know what to expect in the next 30, I'm sorry, 60 minutes. Uh, so thanks again for spending your lunch time with me today. Uh, so we're in this welcome general update section right now. Then we wanna do a poll. I wanna make sure that you walk away from the next 50, 60 minutes with the information that you need about Pyra to help you either make a decision about joining Pyra or a decision about attending one of our webinars or our in-person events that are coming up, um, or that if you are a member that you just get the most you can out of your Pyra membership. So we wanna hear from you uh, with a poll and I'm gonna be focusing on those things that the majority of you want to focus on today. Um, I'm going to introduce you, and I think you might see him here. Uh, my special guest today is Jason Press. He's chair of Pyra Coachella Valley. Uh, I'll also be introducing you to my membership team. By the way, uh, you can see my name here. My name is Lily Arguello. I'll spend a little time introducing myself and also Elisette Sapian, my right hand here with membership. She'll spend some time introducing herself as well. Um, then we'll just go through. I'll give you an overview of Pyra. Um, our mission statement, who our members are, talk about some member benefits, um, then some uh, professional development that we have for you at Pyra, and then just wrap things up. Along the way, 
I answer any questions you have. So if you have any questions, at least that's going to be uh, nice enough to stop me because I do talk a lot and I have a lot of information to share. Um, just to make sure that I answer those questions live, she'll be answering them via chat box as well. So um, that's kind of it. I'm just going to check in. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing you all sharing your, your LinkedIn's. Great. Wonderful. So happy to see you all here. All right, so let's move forward. Um, as a general update, uh, we all are kind of coming out of two years of being stuck at home. And Jason and I have been spending some time together saying, you know, how much we just do not want to be on another Zoom webinar and want to do more in person. You know, Zoom has been a double-edged sword. I'm really grateful for Zoom. I've been able to do a lot of uh, my own learning on Zoom and connect with many of our members this way. Um, and, and that's because, you know, your health and safety has been our top priority here at, HR, at uh, Pyra. We went to, uh, totally virtual in 2020 and in 2021 with our conferences. And now we're doing a lot of webinars, um, which was always our goal because if you are from Los Angeles, you know that getting from one in West LA, for example, getting from Westwood to Culver City can take you 45 minutes. So we always knew we wanted to do more webinars, but we're, we're we got a lot of webinars now. This year, our um, members get webinars for free, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so uh, we, we have up to three webinars a month. Um, we are, our chapters are starting in-person events, and Jason's going to talk about one of the in-person events he had in the Coachella Valley recently, and I'll talk to you about some more. Um, I know, for example, if anyone is interested in networking and in person, on March 22nd, our Pyra Burbank River Glendale uh, chapter is having a lunch meeting, um, and there's going to be a professional development component. Uh, and South Bay on March 22nd is having an evening mixer. So a lot of things coming up, and um, you know, I can I can go in with um, go into more details if you wish at some point during these next 60 minutes. Um, but want to encourage you visit the Pyra calendar. Um, say, for example, you're just interested in a certain region because we are in Southern California. We have, I think it's five, six regions. If you want to go, if you're in the Coachella Valley, Palm Springs area, you could always say, okay, I want that at the top of our calendar, there's a menu, a drop down menu. You could say, I'm just interested in what's happening in the Eastern region. Um, I'm just interested, you could click down on that and say, I'm just interested in pirate in-person meetings. So the pirate calendar, if you want to go to events and are very interested in our professional development, I would go there. I'm just going to chat to keep an eye out on the, on the chat box. Great. So um, that's that. Now comes where um, I want to just make sure I know what you guys want to walk away with. There's a Right, 17 of you here today, and I just want to make sure I focus on those things. So, uh, Elisette, can you launch the poll? So, this poll is going to ask you what is the top thing that you want to learn about during the next 60 minutes? Um, feel free, if there's two things you want to learn about, just uh, you know, tell us in the chat box. Like, yeah, this is my priority, but I also want to know how are you related to SHRM or uh, what's a conference going to be like or um, anything like that. So. I see three of you have answered. Keep answering, keep answering. Okay. Okay, maybe another 20 seconds, Elisa. I think we have 92% part 92 participation. Uh, give it another 10 seconds and we can uh, then show the results. A lot of networking, benefits, focus on the benefits. And um, HR certification, meetings, and anything else? Volunteerism, good, we'll talk about that. Seminars and conferences. Just an, okay. interesting, just an interesting observation, sorry to interrupt, but most of the people who uh, clicked networking opportunities, they were the first to click in. So uh, clearly uh, it's, it's all about uh, getting connected with each other. That's, you know, Jason, um, that's what I hear most. Um, and so I like to make these orientations an, an opportunity as well. But, you know, like you and I have been talking about, 
the in-person, it's just really hard to beat the in-person. And we'll, we'll talk about that a lot. So start networking now. Uh, I think what really sets Pyra apart from other HR associations is that we have the largest, even, even after the pandemic, we have the largest local community of HR professionals in the country. Um, you know, a lot of them, a lot of the HR and, you know, that's just what differentiates us. So to further that comparison, we have a lot of smaller HR associations within our geography. Um, we have SHRM, which is a very large association um, and have, has a lot of at-large members, but they're dispersed. We bring all those people together. So this is a place, if you wanna meet HR uh, practitioners and or those natural partners like, um, the insurance brokers, like the executive coaches, like Jason is, like the compensation specialists, the staffing folks, this is where you're gonna meet them. And we have such a wonderful, rich community. Um, I love, that's why I love working at Pyra. So I don't know if there was another question, Ellie said, uh, here's see. oh, great. Yes, Tiffany, I do see your question. I am going to go through our member demographics in a moment. So uh, you will see that. So let me just spend a little bit of time introducing myself. I'm here in the middle, Lily Arguello. Um, I'm the director of membership. I have a background in organizational development, the strategic planning, leadership development, management training piece. Uh, I did some corporate culture studies, org studies. And so um, I decided to uh, have a family. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to keep up with that 70, 80 hour week. I, I just, it, I'm not built for that. So I actually um, went, was looking for a position internal and I ended up working in the nonprofit space and kind of took a different direction. I ended up at the Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles working in uh, membership, doing um, partnership development in the uh, lower income quartiles of LA. And so I had, a, you know, I've always been on LinkedIn. So I want to encourage you to be on LinkedIn and have a really good profile on there because that's how I got this job. And also I got this job through my volunteer work. And really I call it my leadership work in the community. Uh, I started the um, professional chapter in Los Angeles of the National Association of Women MBAs. And that's where my current boss found me. Uh, through LinkedIn because uh, we had been working in that same space and he knew someone that I had met through that through that work. So um, this is a happy marriage of my organizational development work and my work in the association and nonprofit area. And I love my job. I really love giving back to um, the HR community and helping make an impact on people's careers. So um, before I let in, Elisa introduce herself, who is awesome, she's my right hand here at, on the membership team, I want to introduce you to Matt Pallets, who's also on this slide. Matt is the chair of the membership committee. He represents the membership function at the board level. So he is very accessible. You can see him at a lot of different Pyra events and a great connector. So you know, I know a lot of you want to be connected within the HR community with HR practitioners, um, but don't be fearful of folks that are natural partners, those brokers, um, the executive coaches, because they their job is to network within the HR community. So a lot of, of for example, Matt, he might know of that of a director of HR position in downtown LA or in Orange County or in Riverside and can connect our community with the hiring manager there. So I, I just want you to you know, be open to that. And uh, with that, Elisa, why don't you unmute and say hello? Thanks, Lily. Um, hello, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us today. We're so happy to have you and take some time off of your lunch um, to be with us. I am Elisette Zepi and I'm the membership coordinator here at Pyra. And like Lily mentioned, we are a dedicated team that loves to give back to the HR community and we're very accessible. Um, I may be the first person that you speak to if you dial the main number. So always don't hesitate to call us if you have any trouble with your membership, accessing your online resources. Uh, Lily and I are very accessible. So reach out to us. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the chat box throughout the webinar today. So um, chime in, uh, let us know if you have any questions and we'll pause 
here and there to address them. So I'm happy to be here and our emails are here, our phone numbers are here, so reach out to us. Thank you, Elisa, and that's absolutely correct. She may be the first person that you reach out to, but please reach out to us. I'm really good with email. Um, you know, uh, usually I respond within an hour. I'm really quick, but uh, it's part of my expectation of myself and my team that we don't uh, allow more than 24 hours in a workday before responding. So I don't want you to sit there and be like, this membership isn't working for me. I can't find this. Please just email us, call us. We'll do whatever we can to um, just be clear on what the benefit includes and also that you have access to that. So please, please reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And with that, I'm going to introduce you to Jason Press more formally. Jason, um, thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Sure. Uh, no, thank you for having me today. And I just wish we could get my picture a little bigger on the screen. <laughs> oh, it's a little overwhelming. So sorry oh, about that, guys. <laughs> uh, no, uh, this is my pleasure to be involved with Pyra. Um, a little bit about, I'll give you a little bit of background about me, and then I'll, I'll kind of uh, want to morph that into kind of what made Pyra so appealing for me. So my background is uh, I spent about uh, 25 years uh, in the New York area in, in advertising. So I was part of a big uh, global agency, uh, managing accounts and, and managing a designing and branding division of an ad agency in New York. And then I moved to LA and then ultimately into Palm Springs uh, about 10 years ago. And I recognized uh, the importance of setting up a, and developing a new community. It was around that same time that I transitioned uh, the bulk of my work from doing branding and design work to uh, executive coaching. So I went uh, back to school and I got my uh, uh, certification from ICF or for my PCC uh, uh, certification uh, from ICF, the International Coaching Federation. And I started to recognize the need to reach out and get involved in other communities. And Pyra was a natural for me out here in the Coachella Valley. Since most of my work was coming from other places, I realized I needed to get more of an imprint in the local community. So um, one of the things I, I'm a big believer is, is in the strength of weak ties. That is those people who are not necessarily that close to me, but are kind of one or two people removed. And so to that end, getting involved with Pyra uh, was a way for me to meet others in the HR community who are going to be uh, directly or indirectly connected to my profession. So when I got involved with Pyra, my intention was not to go out there and develop a ton of business, but rather be surrounded by like-minded people who understood where I was coming from and how I might be able to help them. Um, in addition, uh, I also volunteer for the International Coaching Federation of LA, and I volunteer for the uh, Honor Federation, which is an organization based out of San Diego that does a lot of work helping uh, uh, Navy SEALs and special ops folks um, transfer their military skills into the civilian world. Um, and I mentioned this because um, part of the value of these, the networking opportunities that Pyra gives is the opportunities to build one-on-one -on -one connections uh, with the members. So I look at the, the chapter meetings, which I'm glad to say we started again. Uh, we started with 16 last month, which was not a great attendance for us. And then we had uh, close to 30 at attendees this month, which is pretty good for a chapter that only has about 100 members altogether. And uh, we recognized there was a big need for people to get together one to one to meet in a in a uh, uh, in a in a forum where we got to watch a presentation. We got to great uh, get some uh, 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 credits and and some units uh, towards our uh, ongoing certification um, with Sherm. But the, the other thing was, it's an opportunity to build relationships that happen outside the meeting. So one of the first things I recognize is one thing to show up as a group, but it's another thing to trade cards and say, let's get together for a cup of coffee, or in many cases, a virtual cup of coffee. And it's those, uh, again, leveraging those weak ties that suddenly turn into stronger ties and starts to help, help you build not only your business, if you're one of the, uh, if you're a, a vendor or a contractor, somebody who relies on the HR community for business, but also if you're an HR person who's looking for new opportunities or is looking for a greater sense of community. So um, uh, I got involved in, in and now I'm the, the chairperson of the, the local chapter. I would encourage everybody to uh, explore volunteering opportunities in a space that makes sense with their chapter, because this is again where you gain another level of involvement. And you're able to leverage your specific skill set uh, to 
uh, to to benefit both yourself and the chapter. So if you're thank somebody, you. who, yeah, sorry, thank sorry. you. Sorry to interrupt you, but no, uh, you know, I I just want to kind of focus on that because uh, many of you talked about networking and one of my philosophies is it, it's not who you know it's who knows you and the volunteer piece is so connected because like Jason was talking about uh, when you're volunteering there you're doing a lot you're doing a couple of things it's not just p- p- paying it forward and giving of your time you're actually uh, doing a couple more things you're building the leadership skills that are super transferable to the workplace so I know in all of my mentor relationships and my supervisory uh, relationships I was encouraged to volunteer and take on a leadership position wherever I was so uh, just to emphasize I, what Jason's saying, it's really when you're networking, I want to encourage you to go beyond just grabbing a business card. It's about making the phone call. It's about sending an interesting uh, uh, white paper to someone that you met at an event, going out to coffee, inviting them to another event. Um uh, and then volunteerism, because that's really where you're, the, you're going to gain access and visibility within the community, um, whether you're moving here from New York or you're looking for that next best opportunity. So, um, Jason, keep on chiming in. I'm going to move on for yeah. the sake of time. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, most of you asked about networking, how to do it, volunteering and attending these in-person events and virtual events and then following up afterwards. That's what I wanted you to encourage. I want to encourage you to do. Um, I great. I'm, that I, I'll mm-hmm. address it in the chat box about San Diego community. Yeah, and I'll talk about it too. I'm getting to all that. Here's our mission. Um, just really quickly, we, we're here to serve the HR professional in Southern California. We do it through innovative programming. We're going to talk about our conference, our monthly meetings. Uh, Real HR I'm going to talk about, um, and high impact networking opportunities, which we have socials, et cetera, and we'll talk a little bit more. We have, uh, we're primarily volunteer led, so there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Let me introduce you to our head volunteer, Tara Fournier. She's the president of the Pyra board. She is over um, uh, the entire association. And then I'm going to show you a map in a little bit. Our association has 17 chapters. We are the largest SHRM affiliate in the country. I have data for that, so I could prove that. But I think we're the largest SHRM affiliate in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, Tara heads us up from that board governance perspective. She is a senior HR executive. She's actually comes uh, with a background from SHRM as well. I told you uh, my fearless leader here, Rafael Rivera, he found me on LinkedIn through a mutual contact and through my volunteer leadership work. Um, but um, I can't say enough about Rafael. He is a great leader. He has taken Pyra um, conference, for example, from the Pyra annual conference to the California HR conference. We are the largest conference on the West Coast. Um, I think west of the Mississippi, actually. So. Um, and uh, he, you know, I just credit him for building a fantastic team and getting us through the the pandemic. Which you know, usually associations we we um, kind of respond to recessions and ec- economic declines um, in a negative way. So, but we're strong still, and uh, and uh, he's very accessible. Uh, if you do reach out to him, LinkedIn is a great way, and just tell him how how wonderful everybody on this team here <laughs> was. Um, someone asked about membership demographics. I apologize. I know this is really small. You will get the slides. Uh, right around 42% of our membership is at the manager, HR manager generalist level. Um, 26% are at the director and above level. So I think that was the question. If you have a follow-up question, let me know. Um, I talked about our, what I call service providers. Those are those natural partners to um, the HR profession. Uh, that's right now, right now that's 5%. Uh, pre-pandemic, it gets to 10%. I think a lot of those folks during the pandemic was like, there's no in-person meetings. So, um, and then the rest of that, uh, uh, breakout is in this pie chart. But if, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we have right now, right around fourth, this is uh, early uh, from late 2021. Right now we're at 4,000 members. Um, 
approximately 37% are HR certified. Someone had a certification question. I'm not going to be able to get into depth on certification, but I was recently certified. I just received my SHRM SCP um, last year. And I got to tell you, um, I got a raise when I got the SHRM certification. And there's statistics out there that um, depending on the type of certification you get, uh, you can get a bump of up to $20,000 per year with the certification. Um, lastly, on this slide, the top four industries represented by our members are consulting, healthcare, manufacturing, and education. So hopefully that sheds some light on who your cohorts are, your membership cohort is. And I wanted to um, um, uh, talk a little bit about chapters. Um, I think that the chapters are a great place to network. And um, you'll see here, we have 17 chapters and four communities. Someone had a question about San Diego. Uh, Pyra San Diego is our newest community. Um, they uh, had an event they don't meet as often as the chapters. And uh, by the way, we're still adjusting. Pre-pandemic, our chapters, most of our chapters met monthly. Um, and, you know, Jason, you might want to chime in. I think some of our chapters are going back to monthly. Some are going to uh, trying to do in-person events every other month. But I do see, like Jason was talking about, his first in-person meeting was a little lower attendance than he would like. And then this last one, if you want to tell us a little bit more about your last event, I think there was more people. So I am expecting there's going to be an increase of people attending. Yeah, um, it's our expectation. Uh, what, we, what we heard from everybody in the, the, uh, the attendees at the last meeting is they want to come back to the next one because we have one scheduled for April and we have one scheduled for May. So we are actually scheduling for every single month. Um, except for October, uh, which is, and I'm sure you'll talk about that, which is the, a, a bigger Pyra meeting. But uh, we're doing it every month because we're, we want it to be very predictable for our members so they know uh, when and where to show up. It's always uh, the same Wednesday in the month um, and it's uh, at the same place every month and at the same time. And right. as, as our breakfast. So I wanna throw that invite to anyone out uh, who finds himself out here in the Palm Springs, Coachella Valley area, uh, on the third Wednesday, or the second Thursday, second Wednesday of every month, to please uh, think about coming to one of our meetings. You're more than welcome. We have a great breakfast at the Monterey Country Club. Yeah, nice Country Club. I need to get out there. And just so um, to give us a sense of what the meetings look like, this, uh, what I know of, for example, Pyra South uh, Bay and Pyra Los Angeles, because I live near the Pyra Los Angeles group. Um, there's a kind of a networking component, there's usually a meal, and then there's a professional development component where you can earn recertification credit, correct? Is that how yours, your meetings are looking, Jason? Uh, yes, uh, and in fact, one of the things we, we, at our meetings, we encourage everybody to bring their voice into the room to uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so uh, if, you're, if your chapter isn't doing that, uh, maybe it's something you might wanna suggest them because it does help to bring yourself into the room uh, we have a, a sponsor kind of do a brief presentation at each meeting. Um, we also, uh, the, then we have a, a guest speaker uh, who usually brings a lot of value and, and of course the certification that comes along with that. And so that's pretty much a consistent pattern that we have. Great. And as a Pyra member, you get the member discount, um, but non-members come and attend. In addition, when you become a member, you will select a preferred chapter, but you could go to any chapter meeting um, and to get to make sure you get the member price, just register online in advance. So um, the folks at that chapter know that you're coming. They know that you're a Pyra member and can greet you accordingly. Um, this is a, this very rich uh, networking happens here. Um, you can also volunteer on any of these um, uh, Pyra chapters. They each have their own board, as Jason was talking about. Um, the other thing just to point out, we have our largest chapter is Pyra South OC. They just had an event yesterday, the Pyra South OC economic update. There was, uh, or I think 60 people attended. We did that hybrid. So people also um, connected in uh, via uh, Zoom. And then our second largest chapter is, uh, oh, by the way, in um, pre-pandemic, if you attended a South OC meeting, you can meet up to 100 people. 100 people were there. And even yesterday, they were um, talking about different HR positions that were available. So, um, you know, there, there's that 
uh, information sharing, as Jason said. I'm not quite sure, but if you want to introduce yourself, and you um, please let me know in advance because I can connect you with whatever chapter volunteers are going to be there, and um, you know you, you can um, kind of work that out in advance if they're not doing uh, room introductions. Um, I think that's like kind of the highlights of. Uh, of the chapters, but if anyone has any questions, um, we also have four specialty groups. One of them is Pyra San Diego. Um, we call them a community, they're a community, but we have three additional specialty groups. The Pyra Foundation is a separate 501c3 and their focus is on fundraising throughout the year. They have, uh, because they have two scholarship windows, one in spring, it just passed, and the other one is in fall. Usually the fall deadline is in November, but what they um, provide awards are in our, if you are getting your HR degree or someone you know is getting your HR degree or you're getting your HR certification, those are the two big categories and you do not have to be a PIRA member to, be, to get an award. So they're a great group. They also have their own board so another volunteer opportunity. Um, Club PIRA, I like to call them the fun side of, of uh, uh, HR. They cater to the HR professional who's directly responsible for um, the summer picnic, the uh, employee recognition events, um, uh, things of that sort. So um, pre-pandemic, they're you know struggling to kind of find a place right now because it's so venue focused, right? So they had an, their last event was at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and. Um, what, what that would look like is that they'd have an event quarterly. There's a networking component. They also have a vendor fair during the event and they'll have a meal, professional development. So there's also recertification credit available. And then if you're at Six Flags, you can go into the park afterwards. So it's very affordable um, uh, for members. I, I think the price to attend these in-person events was between $35 and $45. And then you get to go into a park or like if you were at House of Blues, there would be a, a show happening that you could attend for the most part. I'm really proud of this group. This is uh, Pyra Emerging Leaders. Uh, we, it formerly was known as Pyra Young Professionals, but we changed the name because we wanted to be a little bit more inclusive. Um, they have their own uh, board as well, and they exist to um, engage and equip and uh, connect uh, those individuals who are early entrants into the HR career or transitioning into an HR career, um, just to make sure that you uh, have that networking available and you have uh, some of the professional development that may make uh, more sense for you. Uh, they have been doing some virtual uh, professional development in the last year. For example, they did a virtual chat on mental health in the workplace. That was a really great chat, by the way, as well. So this is another great group for you to know about. A lot of you wanted to know about the member benefits. Now I am going to talk in general about the member benefits, the top three member benefits that um, I know our volunteers um, uh, head toward mostly. Uh, but if you have any specific questions, always feel free to, to let us know in the chat or contact us afterwards so we could spend some time giving you a one-on-one -on -one direction on it. But one of the things that I talk about a lot is this is where you're going to come to build your HR board of advisors. So um, as an organizational development consultant, I, I uh, remember that HR, the HR executive, um, they always had kind of a lonely job because, you know, they were, you know, kind of facing the HR um, the, the issues around confidentiality and investigations. It, it, it's, it's a very um, grueling position because you're holding a lot of information in strict confidence. Um, sometimes you don't really want to even share it within your department. And so this is where you're going to find the people who have gone through the same thing as you. And, you know, obviously holding strict confidence, you could talk about, you know, I'm, I'm going through this um, issue. I've heard that you might have, uh, gone through this as well. Can you uh, can you talk to me about your experiences in terms of the pitfalls I might find and some of the successes that you've had? So please come here. Everyone needs their own board of directors and this is where you're going to find it. I have a volunteer that uh, talked about her HR Fab Five. Um, you just want people on your voice, on your uh, speed dial that you can call in case um, you need a little bit of guidance. 
Um, also, this is where you're gonna become the HR expert uh, and increase your earning power. Um, you cannot find more accessible and affordable professional development than at, at Pyra. If you look at our calendar, we have something almost every week going on, whether it's in person or, um, or uh, virtual. Um, Jason was talking about our um, employment law update, the California employment law update used to happen in January, now it's in October. Um, people, we are very well known for our employment law update. We work with the, the, some of the brightest subject matter experts in employment law in California, and we bring them all together in one day. So that's something that you might wanna put on your training budget. Um, and we have the California HR conference that's coming up in May. I can't emphasize enough how much um, learning and networking happens at the conference. And so I think I'll spend a little bit more time there in a moment. One of the key things is um, the Pyra workplace. This is where you're going to get the HR tools and resources on a daily basis. Um, and I'm going to get in detail here. So uh, the Pyra workplace it is powered by Mineral, formerly Think HR, and it is just a fantastic platform. And you get it for free with your Pyra membership. And on there, there's a, a, a job description builder. There's an employee handbook builder. There's a salary analysis tool. There's hundreds of forms and policies. I mean, I can just, there's webinars on there. Um, and also with that, you get this Pyra Live. We call it Pyra Live, but think of it as the, your HR hotline. Uh, Pyra members uh, can call that between uh, number. The number is here. Is that 855-306-6460 number um, between uh, Monday and Friday between 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific time. And you can just ask them any sort of question. Um, this is not an employment law hotline, but it is staffed by senior certified HR professionals and um, they'll provide guidance and they also will follow up with an email with any documentation that might help. Um, just the Pyra Live, if you were to pay for that alone, would be $1,200 and you get it with the Pyra membership for $150 or less per year. So it's a great thing. And the employee handbook builder, that would be another $500. And um, you could also upgrade and get the Spanish version. Um, and also what's wonderful that's not on this slide is um, they have an enterprise learning management system that you could upgrade to through Mineral. And um, they have the sexual harassment training online there. And, uh, but it, it is an additional cost. Uh, it could, that would cost you in the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of your company. So great resources here. And um, it is on a separate platform. So some of our members do get a little frustrated. We do have a uh, SSO single sign on with the platform, but if you ever have any trouble finding this or figuring out how to get to it, just drop us an email we'd be, or call us and we'd be delighted to help. We can provide you pretty immediate access if for some reason, your access isn't available um, or hadn't been uh, um, uh, activated yet as well. So I'm going to pause. Any any questions or anyone want to chime in on what I've been talking about? No questions from the attendees yet. But... Okay. All right. Well, I hope you're still there, everybody. <laughs> We've been talking about We've been talking about volunteerism. Um, there's many ways to volunteer. Uh, for example, Jason may have some, I don't know, Jason, do you have any opportunities on your board right now? I forget. Um, yeah, the, 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 the biggest opportunity we have on our board is uh, a social chair, somebody, a uh, communication chair, somebody to put the message out there on, uh, on social media. Um, and just a quick note, I wanted to let, let the members know what's really important is when you, uh, when you join Pyra, you will get emails from, from Pyra and often it's tempting to, uh, to unsubscribe, uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, sometimes it can, it can seem like a lot. I, I want to encourage everybody not to ever under, to unsubscribe. And then, and, and the reason why is because that once you unsubscribe, you don't get the regular messages about your chapter meetings. And, uh, and so those, uh, those means will, will come and go and you, you might not necessarily hear about them. So, uh, in addition to uh, the, um, the the emails that go out, each one of the local chapters has a LinkedIn group, uh, 
which I just uh, was made aware of uh, only recently. And I, so I, I encourage you to find your individual chapter uh, on LinkedIn and join the group there because that way you'll get uh, information that's specifically linked to your group. So um, staying on volunteerism, if, if you're somebody who likes communication and has an interest in, in social media, uh, there, there's a chair available for that. If you're somebody who likes to go out there and meet a lot of people in the community, uh, membership might be the right chair for you. Uh, if you're somebody who uh, enjoys, uh, um, uh, you know, is, is in the finance or, or you know, space, then the treasury chair is perfect for you. So there's, there's really a chair position uh, often available in each one of these chapters. Um, or at least supporting the, the, the chair in each one of those positions, uh, which is really probably directly suited to what, you, what you're really good at. So I invite yeah. people to check it out. It's the best way to get involved uh, and, and stay involved in the chapter. Absolutely. And um, something I didn't say earlier is that I was a Pyra member before I ever dreamed on being on staff. I joined Pyra Long Beach and I wasn't quite sure that I wanted to take a formal one-year commitment because like the the positions that Jason's talking about we really want you to commit for one year like the membership chair which is a great position because you get to work with me um, and then you get to reach out to everybody um, um, but you there's also maybe more like committee positions like you could be on the membership committee you could be on the hospitality committee or you could like for example what I did uh, at Pyro Long Beach is I really wanted to hone my presentation skills. So I helped them host a social in the evening and I presented on networking at the at that evening event. So that was just a smaller commitment. It was more like a two, three month commitment. Um, and also we had the Pyra conference, uh, which is actually the California HR conference. Um, we are, we need a hundred volunteers in person and I need approximately and 50 virtual volunteers so that is another like you know two three day volunteer position uh, and then you'll get uh, at least a half day of conference for free which I'm going to talk about in a moment so uh, lots of ways to volunteer if you want to get started let me know I know at least Seth can uh, connect um, someone asked about volunteering in San Diego we can connect you with that um, but there's a lot of different, don't get disappointed if someone from a chapter doesn't reach out, just remember they're volunteers as well and have their full-time positions. So um, I could always connect you with another chapter as well. And there's virtual uh, possibilities to volunteer. So uh, again, that's connected with networking, remember. Um, so let's talk about some learning and um, professional development opportunities so we i've talked about the, we have a lot of virtual opportunities um pirate chapter meetings um i probably should change this it may not be monthly so for example uh, uh coachella valley is meeting monthly but south oc might meet every other month just to begin the year and so you know because there's a, a little less uncertainty than there has been. I think our chapters are being very cautious and they're regrouping after this last couple of years. Um, but we have the uh, California HR Conference. Uh, I have a slide coming up on that. Uh, it's three, two and a half days or three days full of learning sessions. You can earn up to 35 uh, certification credits there, meet the, um, the most influential subject matter experts in employment law, HR strategy, uh, talent acquisition and retention, uh, and then just network. Uh, I have to work, it's the highlight of my year. And when it's in person, I work 12 to 15 hour days and I love it. I love it. I have so much fun um, just seeing you all there. So I can't emphasize that enough. I already talked about the California employment law update. Um, that is um, in October this year, and it's a full year of uh, regulations, arbitration, how to deal with investigations. If that's, I, I, I meet some of our members and they're like self-proclaimed employment law nerds. I, I like going to Capitol Hill and doing advocacy around employment law, but I, my brain doesn't get that all in, although um, it's just such a great gift to, to be an employment law expert. Um, another thing I'm gonna emphasize here is Pyra Real HR. Uh, I'm actually helping to put those on this year. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with you, Jason, and Q4 to put that on. But um, in on April 7th, we have our first Real HR. A Real HR is a combination, a networking event and interactive learning 
uh, opportunity. And uh, on April 7th, check it out on the calendar. Um, we have a panel around DEI and corporate culture and how those things um, can integrate from an organizational development and management systems perspective. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation and we're gonna have a little fun as we go. So um, all of these opportunities, uh, members get a discounted rate. It's at least a minimum of $15 off. And um, th the same with California uh, HR conference and other Pyro seminars, you, you get a member discount uh, when you become a member. So I do encourage you if you're not a member, um, to become one. I talked about the California HR conference. Um, this year we have kind of this outdoor environment feel. So um, a lot of open windows, um, our, our social events are gonna be outside. Um, we have any, everything, uh, we have some keynote speakers. I'm kind of blanking out on one of our, on one of the keynote speakers that we're engaging. But uh, we have, uh, by early next week, we are gonna have all the sessions up on the calendar. So if you go to cahrconference.org, you'll be able to see and, and select, you know, what are the sorts of sessions that you wanna attend. I love the conference because um, it's a smaller conference, but yet it, it, it makes it more intimate. Like everyone has a seat at our conference. You're not gonna see people, you know, sitting on the floor or things like that. And in addition, our evening events are just a great place to get to know people at a different level. Uh, um, I always talk about breaking bread with people. Um, you know, I come from a more Latin culture and it's all about food, but there's something to that, having a cup of coffee with somebody or, you know, enjoying a song with somebody. Um, we always have a resident DJ at our conference. So it's just a great time. So I, I hope if it's not in your training budget or on your training calendar, that you really consider it. Right now for members, I think it's $1,000, uh, $1,075 for the in-person version for all three days. And the virtual, we're also doing it virtually, it's $270. If you're a non-member, um, it's $100 more and it comes with a one year Pyra membership. So that's coming up soon, so sign up very soon. We are having chats, so these are free for members. You'll see it on the calendar and they're just interactive Zoom chats. Um, a little bit different than the webinars because you cannot get recertification credit here. Um, we have an online learning system and I just wanted to go back. Uh, I don't have a slide for this, but someone asked about HR certification. And I apologize, I don't have a slide up. Uh, we have um, the SPHR, what we do in the HR certification side is provide prep courses. So if you wanna prepare, they're usually six to eight weeks long uh, and it helps you prepare for your HR certification. Right now, I think we're doing the PHR and SPHR. We do the PHR um, California and uh, we also do the SHRM. CP and SCP prep courses. And uh, I just got to tell you, I went through our courses. Our instructor, Richard Dawson, is one of the best um, HR certification prep instructors, I think, in the country uh, because he's very honest. Um, you know, uh, unless you're a great test taker or you've been, even if you've been working as a VP of HR for a long time, you must read the material and go through the work. Um, I'm not a good test taker. So I studied, I calculated over 150 hours and um, that's what it took for me to pass that test. So, so when some of you had a question about that, so I just wanted to be really clear. If you wanna to talk to me a little bit more offline, I'd be delighted to because I really believe in the HR certification. I did the SHRM certification. I thought the materials were fantastic. I have them in my reference library and the online learning system is fantastic as well. So can't say enough about that. How do you apply webinars to your recertification? Is there a special code needed? Um, Courtney, let's talk offline about that. But yes, usually when you do a webinar uh, with Pyra, um, there within two or three days, you get a follow-up email and it will include a uh, certification certificate. And that's the code that you would input into HRCI's portal 
or sh the SHRM portal. I just want to encourage you, don't wait until you have to recertify to do all that, because I cannot guarantee that we're going to give you that information uh, from our history files, and it's not saved in your member profile. So you, that's something that you need to manage, and you get that from us following your completion of the course. So hopefully that helps. I know I have to do it, and I, it freaks me out, because you have to recertify every three years, and I don't want to wait to get all that information input into the system until my three years are up. So I'm almost done here. I just am sharing here on this slide all of the events that are coming up. Um, the in-person events, uh, there, there, there is a cost to the in-person events. As, as Jason mentioned, they're, you know, they have it at a country club. There is a, a meal involved. So there is a cost to that. But we try to keep those costs down. I think those, in, um, it usually ranges from $30 to $45. Um, Jason, how much do you charge for your in-person? Um, there's $30 for the, if you remember. Um, and, yeah. and it includes a beautiful big breakfast. Yeah, the breakfasts are fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Pirate Riverside is having a lunch social, Taste of Riverside. Um, that might be something you're interested in. I talked about uh, uh, April 7th. I'm going to be at Pyra uh, Real HR. Uh, we're collaborating with North Orange County Chapter and South Orange County Chapter. I hope I see you there. It's going to be a fantastic event. And we're going to have great food and drinks, too, in the evening. Um, so if anyone has any questions about these events, uh, let us know. Um, great. People are having to uh, jump off. I'm almost done here, but if you have any other questions, uh, we'll, we'll be here for a, a couple more minutes. Connect online with us. Like Jason said, each of our chapters has a LinkedIn group. He's, he, he now is connected with the uh, Pyra Coachella Valley LinkedIn. And all you got to do is type in Pyra Coachella Valley. You should be able to find them. Pyra Los Angeles, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're, uh, we also have a company page. We have, gosh, I think almost 20,000 followers right now. That's a great place to connect with other HR professionals. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, but primarily most of the interaction happening um, between Pyra and our uh, community is on LinkedIn. Uh, and we also have a Pyra forum at pyra.org slash forum um, if you want to uh, interact and have a specific question. Um, not a lot of activity there. So I, I just push you to the LinkedIn groups and also to the meetings, the in-person meetings or the webinars and chats. That's a great place to ask questions. Um, great. So um, unless there's any questions, that's really it with the content. I think I covered everything. I hope I covered everything that was on everybody's list, but I'll be here for a couple more minutes. Jason, thank you so much. No, it's been, it's been my pleasure. I mean, and, and thank you, uh, Lily. Um, one thing I did want to shout out about is, you know, there's a lot of different ways to digitally stay connected with Pyra, but the real benefit of being a part of a member, uh, being a member of a group like this is there are people you can actually get on the phone and talk to or get on a Zoom call or talk to or, or have a meeting with. And so I encourage people who are new members or thinking of joining to literally speak to somebody. Lily's been phenomenal for me as somebody uh, new to our board uh, and been a great source of support. Um, and there's local people in, in, in each of your chapters who would happy, happily uh, want to spend time speaking to a member to seeing how they can help and get through, you further on board, um, board so, uh, or further involved. So uh, thank you for having me today. This has been uh, wonderful and, and a lot of time a lot of fun and uh, I learned a few things I didn't know about. So thank you. Oh, great, great. Yeah, I also wanna encourage all of you, <clears throat> you know, ask someone out for virtual coffee, take that first step. People love to talk about themselves. So ask them about their experiences, um, whether you're early entrant or you're in between jobs. I mean, it's just a great way to get to know people, even if it's just for 15 minutes. So I wanna encourage you. Uh, at Pyra, there is a, a definite warmth uh, I can't guarantee that everyone's going to be as warm at the meetings, but um, um, you can always email me before you go to a prior event, and I can make sure to connect you via email with someone who I know will be there, so that at least you have a friendly face. I know I have a hard time going to in-person meetings every now and then. I get a little anxious, so um, feel free to reach out. My contact information is here. Uh, you can email me at membership at pyra.org or lily. L-I-L-I -L -I at pyra.org. 
and uh, I should respond pretty quickly. If not, reach out to Elisette. What we're going to do is within uh, probably an hour or so, we're going to send you this, um, these slides and just some follow-up links. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. I think there's something in the chat. Maybe it's just saying goodbye. Um, yes, thank you so much, everybody. I'll be here for a little bit longer, but we're formally adjourned. I will um, stop the webinar soon, as soon as I see uh, a lot of you start to exit. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.